Hey everybody, this is Greg Fine and welcome to this video on Pat Martino's solo on the classic John Coltrane tune Impressions. This solo is taken from Pat's album from 1974 called Consciousness. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to take a look at Pat's solo and we're going to extract 10 devices or ideas that Pat uses in the solo and see how we can grab them and use them in our own solos. So let's get into it. Now, before we get into the specific devices, we need to lay down a foundation. And when we're talking about soloing over impressions, we're talking about the Dorian mode being the foundation. Now, you should know that the original impressions is in D minor, or it starts in D minor, and then goes up to E flat minor 7 for the bridge. In Pat's version, though, he does it in A minor. So we have two 8-bar sections of A minor 7, followed by an 8-bar section of B flat minor 7 for the bridge, and then a return to A minor for the final eight bars. So what we need to make sure we know right off the bat is the A Dorian scale and the B flat Dorian scale. So check out the A minor Dorian scale first. The scale consists of the notes A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. Pay special attention to the F sharp here because this is what distinguishes the Dorian scale from other types of minors, like the natural minor scale, for example. It's this raised six sound that gives the Dorian scale its unique flavor. And then let's take a look at the B flat Dorian scale, which follows the exact same note pattern as the A Dorian, only it's up a half step. And this is the basic scale that you want to use over the bridge section of impressions. Thank you. 
But now let's get into some of Pat's specific devices. The first device that we can glean from the solo is to think in terms of the four dominant. Let me explain what I mean by this. You see, if we go up a fourth from the A minor, we get the D mixolydian mode. Looking at the scale, you can see that it contains all the same notes as the A Dorian. And then the E flat mixolydian contains the same notes as the B flat Dorian scale. But the thing is, if we place emphasis on this mode when soloing over those minor chords, we can get a different color. Notice how Pat starts his solo right off the bat with an emphasis on the notes D, C, and E. This is a really interesting way to start the solo because it gives it a more suspended sound. And there are several instances throughout the solo where Pat seems to be thinking in terms of A minor moving to D7. So make sure that you have the Mixolydian scales as well as the arpeggios down and under your fingers. Now the second device we can get from the solo is to create lines using arpeggios. Check out Pat's look here from bar 14 in the solo. Here he weaves together a B minor 7th arpeggio into a C major 7th arpeggio. Now if you look at the Dorian scale, you can see that these arpeggios are derived right from the scale. So you can practice playing the arpeggios that you pull from the scale like so. What you want to do is you want to try to mix them up during your solo. Device number three is to use the melodic minor scale for a different type of minor sound. With the melodic minor scale, we're taking the Dorian scale, but we're raising the seventh scale degree up a half step. So A melodic minor has A, B, C, D, E, and F sharp, but then has a G sharp instead of the normal G natural. And it's this G sharp along with the raised sixth or F sharp that creates the melodic minor character.
then of course you could do the same thing for the B flat minor. You take the B flat Dorian scale and you turn it into a B flat melodic minor scale by raising the seventh degree. And Pat uses this all over his solo. Device number four is more of a conceptual one. The concept is to mix up your longer lines with simple motifs or melodic ideas. Check out this example from Pat Solo where he starts with a fluid eighth note line and then plays a simple melodic idea before returning back to the faster paced eighth note lines. This is so effective because of the contrast. The listener gets the energy and intensity of those fast-moving eighth note lines, but then you have these breaks or moments in the solo where Pat plays a simpler idea or motif. And it's often these simpler moments that are the really memorable parts of the solo, or the parts that you can remember and sing back. The next device is a classic Pat Martino thing, and this is to have moments or areas in your solo where you use an almost over-the-top amount of repetition. Listen to the simple three-note phrase that Pat uses in his solo, and listen to how many times he repeats it. What's cool about this is that, first of all, it's played very precisely, of course, but also it catches the audience's ear and has them guessing as to what might be coming next. So the idea is to take a simple pattern and repeat it over and over again, probably even more than you think would be reasonable. You can do this to catch a listener's ear and to create a moment of heightened expectation for the audience. Now device number six, here we're incorporating the flatted fifth or the blues note into the Dorian scale. So what we would do is we'll take the basic A Dorian scale and we'll insert an E flat between the D and the E natural. And then we do the same thing for the B flat Dorian scale. But here we want to insert an E natural between the E flat and the F. This blues note can be emphasized in your lines, just like Pat does here. But 
but also this blues note can be used within a longer line as well. Device number seven is to play outside the changes on occasion. Specifically, Pat moves between an A Dorian scale and a C Dorian scale a couple times in a solo, and he does this when he solos over the A minor chord. Now, I don't think there's really a rhyme or reason for throwing C Dorian in there, but if you weave between A Dorian and C Dorian in an artful way, it can be used to create some sonic interest and tension in your lines. Device number eight is to set up the transition between the A minor sections and the B flat minor section. The idea is to start playing in the new key a bar before the new key arrives. So for example, a bar before the B flat minor where that bridge section starts, start using some of the notes from the B flat Dorian scale to lead into or set up the key change. And the same goes for moving back into the A minor section out of the B flat minor section or bridge. Device number nine, and this one's a big part of Pat's sound, is chromaticism. Chromaticism is used extensively throughout this solo. And the main trick to using chromaticism effectively in this solo, and really for jazz soloing in general, is to place the chromatic notes on the weaker off beats. So in other words, place the chord or scale tones on the stronger beats, like the quarter notes, and have those chromatic notes fall on the weaker in-between off beats. 
What this does is it allows you to extend your lines, but still maintain a sense of the tonality or the key that you're playing in. Finally, last but not least, device number 10 is to create rhythmic displacement by using groups of three. Here's an example from Pat Solo. Notice how this motif is working. Here's a riff which falls into a three-beat grouping, and then that three-beat grouping repeats itself. But because it's a grouping of three, it starts each time in a new place in the measure. So here it starts on beat one, but when it repeats, it starts on beat four. And then the next time it repeats, it starts on beat three. And then the final repeat starts on beat two. So this creates a really playful rhythmic effect for the listener. So thanks for checking out this video on Pat Martino's incredible solo on impressions. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks and see you next time.
Thank you.